Uh, I'm the vicar of. Uh, <laughs> I should change my name, didn't I? I'm the vicar of uh, the church here. And a really, really special welcome to Zyra. Hello, Zyra. And to her family and friends. Zyra has been baptised today. And uh, we say very special welcome to her and all her family and friends who are here supporting her this morning. Now, just whilst I remember it, there is a toilet for you to use. You need to go through this door here and just walk through the hall uh, as a, a set of double doors and the toilet is to the left. Um, if you could please just use the one toilet, um, it's the one that's got the disabled sign on it. Uh, the others are blocked off to help you. Oh, Mako, my mic's run out. <laughs> Have you got me back? No, you haven't got me back. <laughs> With, with a baptism. So I was about to say that our toilets, um, if you could please just, just use the one toilet which has a disabled sign on it, please just go through that double door there, through the hall, uh, to the other side of the double door to the left is, is a toilet. Um, all the words and everything that you will need should be in uh, your booklet, so um, everything you'll need will be in that, you won't need anything else. And uh, today is our all age service. We're doing all age services Hello. monthly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That'll be that working again. Sorry, just give me a moment this time. Sort it out. In our uh, monthly all age services, we've been looking at the theme of miracles and looking at different uh, Bible stories that help us think about miracles. And uh, uh, in, in a little while, we'll, we'll tell you a little bit more about the miracle story that we're going to think about uh, this morning. But miracles are such a fun thing to think about. At least I think it is. It's such a fun thing to think about. And I long to see more of the kingdom of God released in us and through us. Yeah, wouldn't it be good to see more miracles? And there may be some people here who are really familiar with the idea of, of, of God working miracles. And there may be others here who are thinking, never heard of that. That sounds a bit strange to me. We will find out more this morning. I would love to see uh, 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 more miracles amongst us. You know, we know that we live in a broken world and therefore stuff happens. Things don't go as we'd like them to go. And we don't always see the miracle. But it is the same God, no matter what. And I once heard someone say, you know, if we don't pray, if we don't ask of our, heaven, of our Heavenly Father, then of course nothing happens. But if we pray, if we pray, then we are far more likely to see his kingdom break into our lives and totally transform things. That's why many of us are here this morning. That's why many of us meet as, as a church family, because we've encountered the presence of the risen Lord Jesus and we've seen his spirit work in our lives and bring transformation to things. Well, that's why I'm really excited to be talking about miracles. I think it's such a fun thing to be thinking about. And especially on a week when we're, when we're baptising a child and the miracle of life. It was just, just wonderful. Okay, so before we uh, come to worship, I've got a couple of notices. 
Toward the end of this month, so this is really is for uh, those who are regular goers of Glen Eagles Church. So towards the end of this month, uh, we have the first residents arriving in Glenville Park just down the road. And Liz Willis and I are preparing welcome bags for them. And then nearer the time, we'll ask a team of people to go and uh, just knock on the doors and give them a welcome bag and really wel welcome them to this community. We would like to put in those welcome bags some chocolate and goodies. So in your next shop, uh, please could you pick up some extra goodies or chocolate and drop it off at our house. We'll try very hard not to eat it. It's very difficult seeing chocolate sit in my fridge. <laughs> but it will go into the welcome bags. Secondly, just a reminder that uh, next Sunday we're on Zoom. Hopefully our final Zoom service, they've been great, they have served as well, but it'll be the final one. And then from the 27th of June, we're going to be here every week, uh, hopefully outside, which means that we can be unrestricted. If it's poor weather, of course, we will go inside and we will live stream the service. But if we're outside, we won't live stream, but we will hopefully record the services and put them up on Facebook and YouTube later in the day where we can. This is our first service in 15 months where we can worship in an unrestricted way. I, we really should be going, woohoo, shouldn't we? Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? So good that we can do that. It's so good that we, can, uh, we don't have to wear masks. It's so good we're going to be able to sing together today. Whee. So good. So if you're able to stand, would you please stand and join me now? We're going to pray and we're going to worship. So if you're able to stand, please do stand. I want to say, Holy Spirit, you are so welcome here. Father, I pray today that we will be encouraged, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of how we're feeling this morning, that we will be encouraged to look to you as our good Father, and by encouraged to ask of you as we seek your presence this morning. Amen.
your seats. It's time to invite Zyra and her parents and her godparents to come on up. Just whilst uh, they're getting themselves ready, you will have all uh, the words in your booklet. There are numerous bits for either all of us or just the parents and godparents to join in. So please do uh, shout out your responses when it's time to join in. On this side, on the other side, that's it. Thank you. Make sure you've got your booklets with you. Very beautiful girl. Okay. So uh, this first bit is uh, for the whole church. So people of God, will you support Zyra as she begins her journey of faith? Yeah. Marvellous. Will you help her to live and grow within God's family, the church. We will. God knows each of us by name, and we are his. Parents and godparents, you speak for Zyra today. Will you pray for her and help her to follow Christ? We will. Baptism is a, is a public sign of God calling us out of darkness and towards him and his heart for us. And those who come for baptism when they're older are usually fully immersed in the water, visually demonstrating that they choose to die to, or another way of putting that is to walk away from their sin. And as they rise up out of the water, just like Jesus rose from the dead, they walk into a new life with Jesus, a life in which they are choosing to be like him and do what he did. Today, uh, Zyra will be sprinkled with water and her parents and her godparents are making those promises on her behalf, which we of course pray will come to fruition in her own life as she grows up. So therefore, parents and godparents, I ask you, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you reject evil? I reject evil. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God? I repent of them. Do you turn to Jesus as your Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Jesus as the Lord of your life? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Jesus, who is the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, so we're going to place the sign of the cross on Zyra's forehead as a symbol. Zyra Clark, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. Do not be ashamed of Christ. You are his forever. Stand bravely with him against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restoring you the image of his glory and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, baptisms, whilst we're observing uh, Zyra being baptised, they're a really great opportunity for all of us to uh, reaffirm our faith together with Zyra and her family. So, this is for all of us. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. 
Let's see what she thinks of this cold water, eh? Okay, let's so lower she down. Zyra Bell Bradbury Cox. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good girl. Well let's give her a round of applause. Very nice, I should let me pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you for Zyra's life and we pray that she will grow to know you and your heart for her, that she will see your hand always at work in her life. We pray that Zyra becomes a mighty woman of God who seeks the things of your kingdom, becoming like Jesus and doing what he did, that in her lifetime she will pray and see miracles happen around her, that she will be someone who hears your voice his words of knowledge for people that sets them free from shame and hurt. That she will be someone who speaks prophetically into the lives of people you put around her. Amen. Amen. Good girl. <laughs> so we have um, uh, brought Syra to baptism, knowing that Jesus died and rose again for her, and trusting in the promise that God hears and answers prayer. We have prayed that in Jesus she will know the forgiveness of her sins and the new life of the Spirit. As she grows up, she will need the help and encouragement of this Christian community so that she may learn to know God in public worship and in private prayer, taking the promises on for herself as she learns to follow Jesus and do what he did. As part of the Church of Christ, we all have a duty to support Zyra by prayer, example and teaching. And as parents and godparents, you have the prime responsibility for this in Zyra's early years. This is a demanding task for which you will need the help and grace of God. So I'm going to pray for you guys. <coughs> Father, would you reveal to Zyra's parents and godparents your goodness and your kindness, your very heart for them, and pour out on them all that is within your kingdom, enabling them to care for Zyra, your love, your wisdom be poured out, as they work to raise her to love you. Amen. Okay, so we're nearly there, but this is the bit where we as the church get to welcome Zyra. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Zyra, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly Father. We welcome you. Let's give her a huge round of applause. Welcome you, Zyra. Okay, so I've got a few things to give you. So first, the candle. Ordinarily, I would light the candle, but um, not in this heat. I'm not outside. <laughs> Zyra, God uh, has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Yay, well done. Okay, and there's a few more things for you here, Zyra. Okay. I'll give these to Mummy. There's a Bible, and there's a certificate, and there's a certificate for each of the godparents oh, as well. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's give them another round of applause as they go back to their seats. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, return to your seats, but don't stand. Uh, don't sit, sorry. If you're able to stand, please would you stand? And uh, we're going to worship. Did you want anybody up the front who knows the actions to this song? I have no idea what the actions are, otherwise I would. <laughs> Maybe Jen wants to offer. Uh, no. <laughs> well, the actions are fairly, the actions are fairly self-explanatory. If I just yeah. talk through them, Maria can do them. Um, I have to say, you, you're unquestionably the most beautiful um, baptismal party we've ever had. <laughs> but will you be the greatest when it comes to action songs? <laughs> Gem, and Chris, Gem and Chris, we're looking, at, looking to you to lead the way. So I'm going to jump up and down, which is... I'm going to jump up and down, if you don't know that one. I'm going to spin right around. I can't do that because I've got a guitar. I'm going to praise your name forever. 
going to shout out loud, and you can literally shout out loud because we're outside. You're going to deafen the crowd, cover your ears, and going to send my praise to heaven. I'll run this race, yes. and I will never stop. Yeah. I'll follow Jesus till the day I drop. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you've got such a lot, when you've got not a lot, what? Be happy. Brilliant. Okay. Just follow the words. I'm going to jump up and down. Yeah. <laughs> 
I've coloured the water blue because I thought it would give everybody more of a chance to see the water. Because if it's clear, it's hard to see, especially when you're right at the back there. So the idea of this game is to move the water from this big pot into the pint cup. But you have to use the spoon. The spoon's in the bag, so that I haven't touched it for a few days. So no germs on it. Do we have it. to take it out of the bag? You have to take it out of the bag. <laughs> yeah. So get your spoon out, ready. Can we move the water closer? No, that's why I put it at the end then. <laughs> so then, when I say go, what you'll be doing is spooning the water from the first bowl into the second without moving the big bowl. Okay? Are you alright, Emily? Are you ready? Oh, she's just getting sorted with her sunglasses. Okay. On your mark. Get set. Go. Come on, guys. No, come on. No, 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 Mel, Mel's splashing a lot. Ah, Don't go swimming with Mel. <laughs> Jen's spilling quite a bit. That's why I'm playing. Oh, Emily's only one spilled one, jo one drop. She's not a messy person. Well trained. Keep going, keep going. Come on, Emily. Come on, come on, girl. Well come on, come on. Oh, I'm sure I've got the smallest spoon. Come on, Louise. Those, they're all the same. No. Come on, Louise. Yeah, Come on, Lewis. Oh, but you're up front, Lewis. Keep going. Oh, oh. Mine's evaporating. Come on, Lewis. Keep going. Lewis is in a good place. John, did you put a hole in Mel's cup? Yeah, She's complaining. Hole. I did. Come on, Lewis. Jen, Chi, put a hole in there. <laughs> Come on, Lewis. 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 Come on, I bet you all wish you were having a go now, because it's nice and cool. <laughs> oh, Lewis is about... Oh, 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 it was an accident. It was an accident. Oh, yeah, extra points for not spilling, I think. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, Mel? 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 No, no, no. Jen's in the lead. Come on, guys. Come on. 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 I've got oh, some left, it's going over the gym. If he fills his cup before I do, and he's and I've got water left, it's yeah. going over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I could do with the top up. Oh, come on, you're nearly there. Come on, come on. Does it cover grey? Keep going. Keep going, Lewis, you're nearly there. You're nearly I'm there. Be great. By the time I, I feel this up. Just look like it, didn't yeah. I? He's got a dessert spoon. <gasps> They've all got dessert spoons. This has got a deeper well than mine. Mine's flat. Oh, 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 oh
Yeah. Are you full up? Yeah. This is Come on, touch that first, Lloyd. Don't use up all your energy, you've got to take it back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you've got ready to it. And stop. Oh, and stop. No, no, no. And it's going to be about a lot more than one point. So we're going to hand over in a moment to Tim to hear from our Bible story. Thank you. Watch my talk on this one. You'll also have to give me one minute as well. Okay, um, good morning. Can I take this out of here? Is that okay? Is it on? Hello, good morning. Um, right, okay, um, we are gathered here today to witness the modern day reenactment of the wedding at Cana. So, um, I'm the master of ceremonies, and uh, but I need five victims, I mean volunteers, I mean volunteers to come and help me reenact the wedding at Cana. Have I got any volunteers at all? Because if I have to do all the parts, I'm going to be really struggling. So, come on, I need a volunteer. Hey, take a seat, take a seat, but don't open the bag at the moment. Any seat will do. Go that way. Oh, this is going to be very interesting indeed. Right. Got six, Tim. You've got six volunteers. I oh, you take one out of it. It's all right. Okay, okay that's, all, that's fine, that's fine. He's a volunteer, really. Okay, no, okay. Okay, excellent, excellent news. Right, so, um, welcome to the Cana Pavilion. Um, this is the wedding of the year, as you know, attended by all the movers and shakers and influencers of the Cana area. <laughs> That's you. Uh, although I think some great cashers have got in. Um, right, so, this is going to be very interesting. In the first two seats, we have the happy couple. <laughs> right, so, um, can the happy couple, um, can you open your bag and um, you should have some props in there. Um, <laughs> right, oh, we're set, we're set in the right order. And there is another prop in there. Um, <laughs> there you go. No, 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 this is the wrong way around there. Oh, okay. Sorry? <laughs> don't don't worry about don't worry about the rest of it. There oh, should okay. be they, you should have a little bouquet in there as well. Oh yeah. And yeah. you should have a little uh, you need to spread that out. Take one side. <laughs> yes it. Can we take a photo? Yeah, my car keys are in there. Yeah, yeah. That's it, <laughs> Thank you. I'll get them later. Oh, this is so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the happy couple. Sharon and David are well known throughout the <laughs> K 
entertainer area as Shaz and Dave. Um, so, welcome to Shaz and Dave's uh, marriage ceremony. Um, contrary, to pop contrary to popular belief, uh, Shaz here comes from a well-to-do family. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, they're, they're well known in the region, well known in the region. And uh, thankfully, we join them after the ceremony has taken place. So, I was going to say I'll leave you a, the kissy bit to your imagination, but yeah. that's not a vision you want. So, um, so, uh, so far, everything has gone according to plan. It's been a fantastic day. The ceremony was great. Uh, they've all enjoyed a sumptuous banquet, and it's and it's brilliant. Um, and now it's time for the speeches, which is where I introduce you to the father of the bride. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Okay. So the father of the bride is a big week in the Cana area. Let me sort my script out. Well known. Shazzy's dad is a big wig. He's a public official. He's got his public office uh, medallion on and uh, he's on the board of governors at the local school and not to mention the board of several local big companies he's well respected in the local area and all throughout Cana um, but it was um, just as Shaz's dad was getting to the toasts in their speech when they were interrupted by the head waiter the head waiter Garcon so Garcon let's see what you've got Right, so, actually Lewis, take the little white thing out and put that over your arm. Break that over your arm, that's what waiters, that's what waiters do. And the empty one, the empty one. Brilliant stuff. So Garcon sneaks, sneaks, up, sneaks up to the father of the bride and says, um, it, oh, sorry, Garcon has been serving drinks all day. They've had a really good banquet. He's had a smile on his face all day. He's been really, everybody's been really happy. And it's just at this point in the proceedings where Garcon approaches Shazzy's dad with a worried expression. Can you do a worried expression? A good worried expression. Well done. Um, right, so, and he whispers, he whispers this to Shazzy's dad. Sir, please don't get mad. Try not to shout. I have news which is bad. The wine has run out. Mm. I've searched high and low, but there's no more about. There is only water to toast your new son and daughter. Uh, oh. uh, this, Shazzy's dad goes weak at the knees. Can you go weak at the knees? Uh, good, that's good. Um, <laughs> how could we have run out of wine, Shazzy's dad thinks. I thought I'd planned everything meticulously. Toast the couple with water? It's just not done. They would be ridiculed, the butt of jokes, a laughing stock across all the parchment media. Their wedding, their wedding would be talked about for years to come as the one where they'd run out of wine. Ah, oh. oh. it's bad, it's bad. Sat not far away though, is a woman called Mary. <laughs> Here's the drink. And so, can you, can you put that little scarf on your head? Just put it on your head, and also in there you'll find a mobile phone. Just hold up the mobile phone. Excellent, excellent, we'll come to that in a minute. Mary overheard the waiter's message to Shaz's dad. And somewhere at the reception, she didn't know where, was her son, Jesus. And she thought, she knew that Jesus would have a solution. So, she didn't know where he was. He was somewhere in the party. So she sent him a text. Here is the text message she sent Jesus. Dear Jay, Shaz and Dave need your help. They have run out of wine, anguish, anguish face emoji. I know you can fix it, winking face. M. A text came back very quickly from Jesus. Ah, oh, Mum, frowning face emoji. You know it's not yet my time. Jay. Quickly, Mary texts back a quick message. But Jay, 
pleading face, pleading face, pleading face. I heart you, M. <laughs> two minutes later, two minutes later, a message comes back from Jesus. Sorted. Wine glass, wine glass. Thumbs up, J. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I have no idea why Mary was so confident that Jesus could fix, um, fix the problem at the wedding. Perhaps she had burned a few dinners at home and Jesus had stopped her scraping it into the bin and resurrected them and they tasted delicious. I have no idea why. But, um, or perhaps she'd seen him uh, heal a friend's grace knee. Anyway, anyway, meanwhile, Shaz's dad, Shaz's dad, not knowing what else to do, tried to keep all the movers and shakers entertained. He told the joke about the two spiders, of, of where they find their fiancés, on the web. Uh, and he'd even told, he'd even told this joke. It's been ten, 10 years since the invisible man married the invisible woman. Their kids are nothing to look at. <laughs> but Shaz's dad was all out of jokes. Uh, and so was I. So suddenly, <laughs> but suddenly Garcon came back. Suddenly, Garçon came back. Shazzy's dad was just about to apologise that they've got no wine. And he shouted to Shazzy's dad, Sir, sir, look what i found. We have wine, we have wine, and there's plenty to go round. And it tastes divine. This will please the crowd. So Shazzy's dad finished his toast to Shaz and Dave. May God bless their marriage. Not knowing, of course, he already had. And to this day, the wedding is talked about as the one where they ran out of wine. Okay, I want you to give her a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you guys. Just leave them there and we'll, we'll sort them out. Thank you. Okay, just give us a minute to tidy up and then I'm going to... Am I not going to hand over to Steph? I'm going to hand oh, over. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to hand over to Steph in a minute, and she's going to come and read that message from the Bible, and you will then see how many liberties I took with the mess with the story. So. <laughs> tell I was born when there was no television. <laughs> As oldies can't do uh, technology. Uh, re the reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, and it's verses 1 to 11. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He didn't realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first 
and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So how many liberties did Jem take with, did Tim take with that then? I know Jem takes liberties all the time, but uh, how many liberties did Tim take? It's quite a few, wasn't it? Yeah. I like the one about the, uh, maybe when Jesus was younger, he'd been doing some cooking, or mum had been doing some cooking, and uh, hadn't succeeded, and the food got resurrected. Yeah, that's not quite in the Bible, but uh, you never know, you never know. So water into wine, the seven miracles in John's Gospel, and this is the first. And it tells us about an event, it tells us about something that happened, but it also tells us a lot about what Jesus is like. And so Jesus is at this fantastic celebration, just as we are. Jesus loved a get-together. Don't think of Jesus as being someone who was serious. He loved being with people. He loved a great get-together. Um, maybe when I was a kid, we'd have called him a party animal. There's probably a similar phrase now, uh, but I'm too old to know what it is. Uh, the situation arose, as you've heard, where they ran out of wine. And that was really shameful at the time. Weddings then didn't last just one day, like a lot of our weddings do. They lasted several days. They needed lots and lots of wine. And so the miracle occurred, as you saw it in uh, Tim's drama, and as you heard about it in the reading. It wasn't super dramatic. It was a quiet miracle. But it made an awful lot of wine. Now, I've got over there a, no, no, I've got it here, a pint. Couldn't find a wine, a bottle of wine at home, uh, but I have found a bottle, empty bottle of milk here. How many of those do you think the amount of wine that was made would have filled? Anyone like to make a suggestion? How many of those was it? What do you think? Yes, over there. Over 4,000. Anyone else got a suggestion? Anyone else got a suggestion? 100. 100. Anyone else got a suggestion? Yes. 6,000. 160. Well, we've covered the range there. That's very impressive. About 1,000. 1,000 bottles of wine. 1,000 pints, pints of wine were made then. That was the six stone jars. That's an awful lot of wine for a wedding. So it wasn't as if Jesus just made a little bit. He made loads and loads and loads. So Jesus changed something that was a bit of a disaster into something that was absolutely fantastic. He changed something that was wrong into something that absolutely was right. That must have had a profound effect on his disciples. And it said at the end of the reading that the disciples then put their faith in him. Now I don't suppose that that was the only thing that made the disciples have faith in Jesus, but it was certainly part of their journey as to, to become a people who follow Jesus. And sometimes for us, as Dawn was saying at the start of the service, miracles can be part of our journey of faith. About five years ago, my father-in-law had problems with his heart, quite serious problems with his heart. Um, and we thought he might have to have an operation. He was on quite a lot of medication for it. And then my mother-in-law had a stroke. And she, was, she recovered from it, but not well enough to be able to do things around the house. So he then had to take responsibility, really, for running the whole house, for running the whole shebang, everything. And for the last five years, he's done it. He hasn't had an operation. At the time, when it first happened, he really could hardly walk. He got breathless whenever he was doing something. When we first went to visit my mother-in-law in hospital, we had to walk up, not a very steep slope, but a slope nevertheless, and he got tired just walking up there. Since then, though, he hasn't had much, he's changed his medication, but no operation, but he has improved so much, and he can now walk several miles. We were reflecting on this a few weeks ago, and we just went through the, their whole story of what's happened since. And we said to him, what is it? And he says, it's a miracle. Now, they are both people of faith, but that, and that was his phrase, it's a miracle. Much of the time, our walk with God is quite mundane. He comes alongside us, 
And whenever we are struggling with things, he comes along, we can chat to him, we can pray to him. But there are also times when he intervenes in a really big way. But it's often, again as Dawn said at the start of the service, when people pray. And in the same way that Jesus turned water into wine, Jesus wants bad situ situations to turn into good. And the people who do this are us. God does these things through us. We are his people and he can do great things through us. And those things can be a miracle. Amen. Now I'm going to hand over to Ruth for our prayers. Today, today, today we heard about the miracle of turning water into wine, a bad situation turned to a good one. So in our prayers today, we're going to be asking on everyone's behalf for changes to be made in bad situations. So if you're ready, we'll begin our prayers. Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers to you. First, giving thanks for the blessing of baby Zyra. May she always be surrounded with goodness and love. Give wisdom to Sophie and to Nathan as they teach her and she grows to know you. Bless them all with your loving grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Wellingborough as we look forward to the ending of the COVID restrictions. For those people who have struggled with life in this lockdown year, that they may hear the Christian message and come to know you for themselves. Change their worries into hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember anyone who is homeless and ask that in order for their situation to change, that the support and the guidance that they need becomes available. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless anyone who is feeling tired, anxious or lonely today. Surround them with wisdom and love and change their feelings to look to those of calm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for anybody who is ill. We bring the names of anyone known to us, either out loud or in our hearts. And I'll pray for Pat. Please bring change for their situations by either comfort or healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for those places where there is war and oppression. We pray against cruelty and all people persecuted for their beliefs and protection of all Christians and their families. We ask for change from war to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for this beautiful day, for our families and friends. We lift them up to you. You know their needs, and we ask that you fill them with peace and joy. Send us out today with your blessing to help those in need to change bad or difficult situations to good and happy situations, to love one another as you love us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now hand over to Robin Maria for our final song, Water Turned Into Wine. Okay, you've all been sitting down for far too long, so it'd be great to stand up if you're able. Let's see, Water You Turned Into Wine. This is just a celebration of how great our God is.
here. Thank you for being here this morning. And uh, Zyra and uh, family, we pray that you enjoy the rest of uh, this really special day. Uh, in a moment, we're, we're just going to do some um, actions to our final blessing, which we did uh, last month's All Age. And then at the end, I will simply walk around the side, walk around the side of the building and to uh, the front, just so I can say goodbye to people uh, individually. And uh, still in the current climate, we are still asked to leave uh, reasonably promptly. So if I just uh, remind you, and um, for those who weren't here last month, what the actions are. So it's, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And then it's Amen. Okay, so we'll do it together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Have a wonderful rest of the day, everybody.